Oh my gosh. Like I can't even, I can't even fake it right now. This is really good. so excited we are going to be making an herbal wine i know it's perfect for the fall season it's going to be perfect for winter it's going to be perfect for all of the seasons honestly this wine has a lot of health benefits let me tell you you're not just going to be sitting there getting drunk no you'll actually be healing your body on a deeper cellular molecular level with this wine i know a lot of us probably like to drink haha <laughs> Hashtag 2020. This is gonna be a wine that definitely takes your drinking to another level and I really hope that you can make this wine and just totally get into it. And when you get into it, you can put your own energy into this wine. You can put your own feels into this wine. When you drink this wine, you will definitely be drinking it with more intention. It's a really great way to get in touch with your more creative side and also indulging a little bit in your drink. So let's go ahead and make this wine together. If you haven't been to my website before, this recipe is going to be listed on my website, greenvibeswellness.com slash blog. And there you'll be able to read the full recipe. And today we'll be working with three different herbs. These herbs each have different medicinal benefits. I picked them up myself and I just thought it'd be fun to kind of experiment with these. So first off, we're going to be doing a chisandra berry. Chisandra berry is incredible for people with nervous exhaustion. Also people who suffer from insomnia. Honestly, this is such a great herb. I like to take it when I have night sweats. When you have spontaneous sweating, which I know which is just so weird out of nowhere, this herb is really great. This herb is also an astringent, an adaptogen, and a hepatoprotective. All of these things mean that it's really good for you, let me tell you. Shisandra is known as the berry of the five flavors because it hits all five parts of your tongue. If you didn't know, your tongue is separated into actually flavor sensors. We've got the salty, we've got the sweet, we've got the sour, we've got the bitter, and then we've got, I'm not quite sure what the last one is, but I'll figure it out. Your tongue is separated into all these and Shisandra hits each and every one. These different tastes correspond to different organs in your body, which is so amazing. So Shisandra has an affinity towards the heart heart, the spleen, the liver, the stomach, all of these different organs in your body, especially the kidneys and the liver. The second herb we'll be working with is elderberry. This is an incredibly popular herb right now, especially after what's been going on in the world with the corona. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people have been taking to elderberry and wanting to make elderberry syrup, elderberry remedies, and right on because elderberry is an incredible, incredible, incredible herb for fighting and building your immune system. Elderberry really helps to build your immune system and to keep it strong. Elderberry is high in vitamin C and helps to aid when there is a sluggish immune response. Elderberries are safe for children and people of all ages, including older people. Elder, hello. Elderberry is just such a fantastic herb to take when you feel like you want to prevent sickness and also to help your immune system fight sickness when it actually comes upon you, if ever the case. So I highly recommend elderberry, just making your own elderberry syrup, honestly. The last herb that I'll be touching on is Damiana. Damiana is an aphrodisiac herb and it's known as Ternera aphrodisiaca. I honestly really have built a strong connection to this herb. I take it almost every week and it's just so incredible for rebuilding energy, especially around your sacral and solar plexus chakras. It's just really nice to rebuild the sexual energy that you have within you because sexual energy is creative energy and vice versa. So definitely take advantage of these plants that we have around us. They're here to help every single part of us. Damiana is also known to be an antidepressant and really helps nervous stability if you have anxiety or constant headaches, especially around your menstrual cycle. Damiana is an incredible herb to help ease all of that. Again, if you want more information on all of these herbs, it will be listed on my blog, which is greenvibeswellness.com slash blog, and you will find the full recipe here as well as the information about the herbs. Let's go ahead and get the ingredients. Here I will be using this Merlot wine. Let me tell you, don't use this. <laughs> 
Okay, monkey see, monkey do for the rest of the video, but do not use this. Try to go out and get some port wine, some sherry wine, some Madeira wine. Um, I have all the wines that you can use listed, again, in the recipe. Merlot was the only thing that I could grab, honestly, on the spot, so I will be making my wines with Merlot. And also, I'm gonna be experimenting by putting some honey in there. I like to make elixirs, as you all know. If you haven't, check out my elixirs video. I make tons of elixirs. I show you how to make elixirs step by step. I'm gonna try to make a nice, sweet wine um, extract out of this, and I'm very excited to see what is going to come of it. This is the honey that I always use. I always buy organic, local, raw honey, no matter what. Honey is extremely medicinal, and that's why I use it in a lot of my recipes. I am vegan, plant-based, um, but I do consume honey for medicinal purposes. Now, I have a little surprise for you. I actually made a Shisandra Rose Elixir wine already, experimenting, and I'm gonna taste test it today. I'm going to express it today really quickly for you guys to see what the end result will be before I show you how to actually start the process. So this is a wine elixir, and in here I have one cup of Shisandra, one cup of rose petals, and I put a tablespoon of hibiscus. Oh, and this was on the, it looks like it was on the full moon in Aquarius. Ooh, yeah, I did this on the full moon in Aquarius, y'all. Mm. And this right now today is the full moon in Pisces, so. <laughs> um, now I'm, I used honey or organic. I, I used Cabernet. I used organic Cabernet wine, and I did this on August 23rd. So, yeah, I'm so excited to try this. I'm just gonna, like, you know, sip it a little bit for y'all. <laughs> I'm gonna get that little sip sip. And we're gonna see if it's any good, alright? So listen, y'all have seen me drop so much stuff on this mat and it's white and we're dealing with wine today. So I'm going to be putting over this little protective towel. I'm not kidding today. I'm pretty sure there's going to be wine spilled somewhere. <laughs> All right, so I've got my filter, my little sieve, my wine glass, and we're going to go ahead and just pour me a nice little glass. Now, technically, the dosage is going to be a tablespoon to one cup a day. Now you can take a tablespoon a couple times a day or you can take a fourth of a cup a couple times a day. Um, it just depends on how your body feels after taking the first dosage. So take it slow. I would say do about a tablespoon first and then if you really like it, do about a cup a day or you can do a fourth of a cup a day or just you know kind of measure it based on your weight, your size obviously and your tolerance level. so hardcore. I can't even I can't even figure right now this is really good it's something about like maybe the honey mixed with the shisandra like usually shisandra I gotta warn y'all shisandra is super powerful it's a super powerful herb and wow I feel it in my heart oh my gosh y'all like this is this wine is so good. This is amazing. Like, I highly recommend. <laughs> it's the combination of the rose. The rose makes it like so gentle. The Shisandra is not as like boom in your face because usually it is on your taste palettes. Like honestly, I've experimented with Shisandra so many different forms. I've made a decoction, I've made a syrup, I've made a glycer, like everything. But this, this is really, really delicious. This is like, <laughs> this is like damn that's all i can say this is really good i would definitely take like half a cup of this every day or a cup of it every day wow i couldn't even hold the phone anymore it's just so overwhelmingly delicious and i feel my whole body just warming up i feel my whole body just like waking up and like circulating wow this is so good i'm 
like really happy that I made this, like no cap. The rose petals right here, all the shisandra berries, they expanded really nicely. At first I thought this was too full, but in reality it was just the perfect amount because the shisandra is just like strong enough. So I'm probably gonna express this and then keep it in the same jar, the same the, the liquid in the same jar and then just refrigerate it and probably drink it over the next three days or something like that. I don't know how much I'm gonna get out of it, but I'll just try to take a tablespoon or like a fourth of a cup every single day and um, have this amazing feeling. <laughs> So I just finished pressing it into this little wine glass. This is all that I got out of this um, jar. So I'm gonna pour the remainder in the jar. And then I think I'm gonna make actually a decoction with this. If you haven't seen my decoction video, how to make a decoction, it's very simple. You just basically simmer the hard plant, the hard plant parts. <laughs> We're talking about roots, berries, stems. You just lightly boil them on the stove, not high, very low for like an hour or two, and you get an amazing result, amazing medicine. So I'm probably gonna do that with the remainder of these. And that's also what I love about herbalism is that you can just use your herbs in so many different ways and in so many different you know trips because nature provides nature provides us with all that we need so when you use all parts you just you're just a part of nature then you know reduce reuse recycle that's what i that's how i feel about it I want to show you the difference between Shisandra and elderberry. Elderberry is a lot smaller, finer, darker, and um, it smells differently and it definitely tastes differently. Whereas Shisandra, like I said before, it's the five taste berry and truly, 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 you can taste all five things. So don't ever mistake in Shisandra for elderberry. Smells very spicy too. It smells so sweet. If you find a really good place to find Damiana, let me tell you, it'll smell like sweet, spicy vanilla. Oh gosh. I can see why it's an aphrodisiac. It just, the smell literally turns me on. It smells so incredible, so healing, so sensual. And it's so fluffy and it just like rings of abundance and of joy and happiness whenever I smell it. I love it. Rose petal. I'm gonna be adding rose to each and every single one of these. I just love to add the feminine essence. I just love to add in that touch of femininity. And I also love the smell and the taste of rose. It just reminds me of home. It reminds me of following my heart and remembering that I'm sacred. I'm a sacred being and what I'm making is sacred. And it's just that touch of rose that reminds you that you are worth it. You're worthy of nice things and you're worthy of feeling so unconditionally loved. So basically I'm going to be doing this very quickly as in like a lineup and I'm going to be lining up each of the jars one by one and then I'll be pouring each of the herbs about three fourths of the way full for that. And then I will be filling them with a little bit of honey and then I'll be filling in the rest with the Merlot wine that I have. Again, try to get port wine or sherry or um, Madeira, something different that I've listed on my website. Again, you can find this full recipe blog below in the links, greenvibeswellness.com slash blog. But here we go. We're gonna go ahead and make these delicious, yummy herbal wine elixirs with three different herbs. to fill this only about halfway up you can see the elderberries are about half and then the roses make really really half um, I'm only doing half because I want more wine out of this and as you saw herbs can be very very selfish they can take the wine they can take your liquid and keep it and you have to press it so hard um, but right now I'm just deciding you know my intuition is telling me just fill it halfway it doesn't have to be three quarters of the way and then just fill the rest with wine
as you saw, I filled this one halfway, I filled this one three-fourths, I filled this one three-fourths, and I put a lot of honey in the Damiana one to make it sexier. I put um, just a tiny bit, not a tiny bit, but at least a quarter of a cup of honey in this one. I probably put a half a cup of honey in this one. And then I probably put um, a quarter of a cup in the middle of a half a cup of this one. And I also thought of something brilliant. I'm going to put some ginger in my elderberry um, because ginger and elderberry with the rose and the honey together, oh, it's going to be just amazing. I feel it in my soul. And another thing about being an herbalist, listen to your intuition, listen to the things that call to you, and just go with the flow. label your remedies always even though you think you know you don't really remember when it comes time to really remember label them it'll save you so much time trouble and if you really like the recipe you've got it on your label so you can save it on your computer or something I'm very excited to be trying these. I'm going to express them probably in a couple of weeks. I would say to keep your wine in a cool, dark place for about two to three weeks, and then you can go ahead and express it and drink it. So thanks again so much for watching this video. Please like this video, subscribe down below if you want more content like this. And I really enjoyed having you here. Please, again, visit my website, greenvibeswellness.com. Visit my Etsy shop where you can find remedies that I hand make. And I hope to see you soon. All right. Peace. Bye.